So hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some aspects on quantum espresso. And I will start from quanti quantum chemistry and DFT and why uh, do we choose quantum espresso. Um, if you want to simulate some property of a material, for example the band structure, the density of, uh, density of state, no matter whether it, it is electronic density of state or phononic density of state, or the material, uh, the response of the material under some radiation by, uh, by uh, some light, you need the calculation from quantum mechanics. For example, if I give you the structure uh, of sodium chloride here, and and say the purple atoms they are sodium atoms and the green green ones are chloride atoms. I I give you the structure and I want to ask the question whether this is an insulator, or this is a metal, or this is a semiconductor. Um, to answer this, you you need to calculate uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, if you formulate the question around, and, and let's say, I don't know what is the structure of the, of the material, but I want to calculate it. Can, can we do that? Yes. For example, um, if you have, have a benzene molecule like this, you want to know whether all of the atoms are on one plane, and what is the bound uh, angle here, what is the bound length here, or if you have a solid, let's say this is a, a structure of silicon, you want to know why silicon, uh, uh, why crystal, uh, crystalline silicon looks like this, and what is the bound length here. You also need to consult computation uh, from uh, quantum mechanics. So, uh, so of course, in, uh, th this is like you start really from the uh, equations of uh, quantum mechanics, but in uh, in academics, usually this can be called quantum chemistry. Although this has nothing to do with real chemistry, it starts from the basic equations of quantum mechanics. And there are many many methods, many computational methods in quantum chemistry to give you this information from. Uh, coupled cluster MP2, MP3, different methods. The most uh, the most widely used uh, method is called DFT, which is which stands for density functional theory. And uh, DFT is so widely used because because it is uh, inexpensive. Inexpensive means and that it doesn't uh, doesn't cost uh, so so much uh, computational power and you can easily apply DFT to a much larger uh, system than couple cluster or MP2 method. And uh, there are many modern DFT softwares, for example VASP, and Quantum Espresso is among those DFT softwares. On the next slide, I will tell you some uh, information about DFT softwares. Uh, for DFT calculations, you have to first choose the local uh, the, the basis set. You have to basically two choices: one is the local basis set, one is the plane wave basis set. What it means is that um, the local basis set means that you uh, you express the wave function that you want to construct. For example, you have those uh, atoms here. You want to express the wave function that you want uh, to. Uh, that you want to uh, construct with the superposition of the um, local atomic wave function, yeah, and uh, and this this is the w where the name comes from. This local basis set, or another possibility is that you don't really care about uh, those atoms. You just say, okay, this is a random uh, function. You can do Fourier transform. For example, it is a superposition of uh, sine wave and uh, another sine wave here. So you do a Fourier Fourier decomposition, and uh, and those uh, sine waves they are they are basically the plane wave. And um, 
to choose this, the general guideline would be that the local basis set is suitable for calculating uh, local things, for example, molecules. Yeah. Uh, but the plane wave basis set uh, is w works best if you want to calculate some periodic system, for example, crystalline solid, so, so that it's periodic infinitely. But what if the molecule or add atom is on the surface? Then you have, uh, have both, the, uh, both the local thing, which is the molecule or add atom, and you also have a periodic uh, system uh, underneath. In this case, uh, actually, you bo both will work to some extent. So, so that's why, I, I mean, it is, it is not, not really a clear-cut uh, difference. You can also use the local basis set uh, DFT softwares to calculate the solids. And you can also use the plane wave basis set uh, soft, uh, software to uh, calculate the molecules. This, this, is, this is not a problem, it is just that it is uh, less convenient. Yeah. And uh, so, for example, in this tutorial, I will also show you how to use quantum espresso to calculate uh, single molecules. You can also do that. Uh, is it, it, um, it is just less convenient than, uh, than these uh, quantum chemistry codes. Um, yes. So, so my suggestion would be that if you if your project I is some uh, is single molecule, let's say single benzene molecule or some ammonia acid molecule, I would suggest that you start from the local basis set. But if you work uh, usually with solids, and sometimes you calculate molecule on the surface, and sometimes you you want to calculate. Uh, for some cases, the molecule in a gas phase. In in that case, I, um, it's it's totally fine to use quantum espresso for for both of the tasks. Another uh, important factor uh, that influence influence you whether like, which software you choose is whether it is commercial or free. Uh, for example, Gaussian is commercial, Orca is free. If if you are interested, I could also do some t tutorial on or Orca. And now we more or less focus on the plane wave basis set. The most two commonly used ones are VASP and Quantum Espresso. VASP uh, is is basically uh, uh, mostly widely used uh, in uh, in academics. It is commercial. It is expensive. Uh, for quantum stressor, it's free, it's open source, but I would say this is the second most widely used DFT, uh, DFT code if you do some uh, literature research, so it also works decently. And, and the question that, uh, that may pop up here naturally is that, uh, I mean, is the commercial one better than the free one? Why is it so expensive? Um, like my my answer would be that uh, the commercial ones, if you choose the the parameters correctly, it shows basically the same result. You see uh, see this article here, uh, published in Science in uh, 2016 about uh, so so basically the uh, the uh, the authors in the paper they cross check different different po uh, this, uh, different pseudo potentials different pseudo potential library and different uh, softwares and uh, and they more or less give the same result and i labeled the uh, quantum espresso here which is abbreviated with qe and wasp here and also the vin 2 k that we uh, mentioned before, so everything is on the same page. And the conclusion is that uh, maybe this is not the case five years ago or six years ago, but nowadays all of the modern DFT softwares gives more or less similar and consistent results, so you shouldn't worry if you use Quantum Espresso insta instead of VASP. But is there, any, is there still any advantage of VASP? Yes, of course. 
um, the VASP, the, 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 the biggest difference that I, that I see is that VASP offers well-maintained pseudo-potential library. Pseudo-potential files are probably one of the most important parameters that you need to choose when you calculate DFT, which we will, we will talk about um, in, the, in, the, in the next videos. And, and VASP, um, it updates the sort of potential library uh, like quite often and it is, it is well maintained. For qu Quantum Espresso, uh, it's free, it's open source. It has a lot of open source uh, pseudo potential library available and also covering nearly all the elements, maybe not the last ones on the ele elemental table, but we will not use that. Uh, usually but uh, if you if you have really specific requirement you need uh, some specific element with some uh, like uh, some really specific pseudo potential or, or exchange exchange coupling you may you may not be able to find it in quantum espresso for example the the, the newly developed scan pseudo potential which I will also talk about later Okay, so as, as a summary, uh, you can use quantum chemistry to calculate uh, material properties, and um, to um, and DFT is one of the maybe the most widely uh, applied uh, method in quantum chemistry, and uh, there are there are many DFT softwares. Usually, they are they can be characterized with uh, by local basis set or plane wave basis set. And in the case of plane wave basis set, we have uh, the most two common choices, VASP and Quantum Espresso. Where VASP is commercial, we are not going to talk about here. And Quantum Espresso is, is free and open source and it, it uh, offers uh, more or less the same uh, capability as VASP. So that's, um, that's why I would, I would recommend you uh, to, to use quantum espresso. Okay, so for uh, for for the later uh, tutorials, I will I will give you a quick start guide first uh, about the system requirements, about how to download, how to install, and basic examples. And after that, I will gradually uh, give you more insight by uh, by uh, showing you some some project oriented. Uh, tutorials. So, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you you learned something, and uh, hope to see you next time.